So I'm going to talk about metadata standards and interoperability in relation to digital cultural heritage. Um, and this really, I suppose, is going to be, uh, you know, a kind of a, a, a quick tour. So um, in the early days, the web consisted of unstructured data and no standardization of any description. And this led to a uh, lack of interoperability. And um, so the question arose, how does one make unstructured data machine readable? And uh, I suppose the answer is to use the concept of the semantic uh, layer stack, make data uh, RDF or XML compliant, uh, adopt standards that enable this. And so we have a diagram here, which represents the semantic web layer cake. It shows the layer stack of the semantic web. Uh, the metadata layer that, that we're focusing on in our lab is the XML layer. And by making all data XML compliant provides commonality uh, for and between systems. This XML can be applied through the adoption of a suitable standard, which is XML compliant. And this would make the data uh, structured and machine readable, and then AI can be used to manipulate it. And this is a strategy that is being employed by the Insight Cooley Research Lab uh, in relation to the Professor Michael Cooley collection. And although it's not a born digital collection, the principles used to make its data machine readable uh, are, are similar. Um, this is the architecture that we're, that we're working on uh, in the Cooley Lab. Um, it's um, XML compliant data is validated and taken into the system in the form of METS. Uh, METS uh, it can then be queried and output converted from XML through XSLT uh, transformations into a format that can be readable on many output devices such as phone, tablet, uh, etc. Um, and um, I think it's really important at this point to uh, refer to the importance of communication uh, and acceptance of technology in, in establishing um, interdisciplinary systems like this, where we have uh, uh, developers and archivists or librarians working together. Um, so interdisciplinary teams working together to co-evolve the technology. Um, in, in our lab, we have, uh, we have been trying to, to, to work in this manner. And uh, from our lab, we've, uh, we've created a new manifesto for systems engineering design practice based on this. And also what has evolved from the lab is a, a, an enricher method for human machine symbiotics and uh, smart data. Um, so, um, you know, we're making good progress in that regard. Um, there is a power element involved when a developer comes in to create a system and many people fear automation as it can be seen as taking over their jobs. And a better approach is to co-evolve the technology where the librarian or archivist has the choice to accept or reject the technology. And human tacit knowledge has to be valorized. Um, but the good thing is that both can work together in a human machine symbiosis. And so in regards to the technology, um, we have a process. Uh, we use Protege. Uh, Protege is software created by MIT and is open source. It uses OWL, which is the web ontology language. Um, so uh, Protege is used to describe the ontology or the domain. An ontology is an explicit and formal specification of a conceptualization. Ontologies provide a shared understanding of a domain, which enables semantic interoperability by overcoming differences in terminology and by enabling mappings between ontologies. And so using Protege, which in turn uses OWL and RDF, uh, the ontology can be created and the granularity refined down to uniform, uniform resource indicator or URI level. Um, a language that is building on OWL is a semantic web rule language combining OWL and rule, rule uh, ML. It's known as SWIRL. Um, these components in Protege can be interrogated by the use of a Sparkle query plugin. And for those of you familiar with databases and structured query language, you'll find lots of similarities. Um, the uniform resource indicator. Uh, a URI is a string of characters that unambiguously identifies a particular resource. And because of its ability to uniquely identify a specific page or book or document on the web, it opens a portal to linked data and linked open data. And so it brings us to the question, what if any Cooley asset could be found anywhere 
and from any source on the internet. And um, this moves us towards linked data, uh, which uh, Dr. Lucy McKenna spoke about there this morning. Um, so to have a, wink, uh, a web, sorry, of linked uh, uh, data. Um, so open data then, open data means that data is open to any kind of application or API. And this can be achieved if we use open standards, um, standards like RDF to describe metadata. If, if we can produce open data sets, uh, then we will be able to link these open data sets to each other to, to provide uh, context. Um, and in relation to open data, Ireland ranked first in the open data maturity report for the past three years. And this report serves as a benchmark to gain insights into the development achieved in the field of open data in Europe. And uh, Tim Berners Lee, the inventor of the web and linked data initiator, suggested a five star approach to, um, to linked data. And um, you can see these here. And I know I'm, I'm running short on time. So this is what we're kind of moving towards. And um, then just uh, here is the uh, museums collections and archives portal from the Irish government. And it's, uh, it's an open uh, data set. It has the Creative Commons license. And you can see there the openness rating is three. So that kind of ties what I've been uh, talking about together. So that ends the whistle stop tour of, of metadata standards for digital cultural heritage. Um, I, I hope that you've uh, that you've enjoyed it and gained something from for it and from it and thanks for your attention. Thanks folks.